Hi, I'm Cara Towell. I'm the Associate Director for Telepsychiatry in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the University of Washington School of Medicine. And my name is Brad Felker. I'm a psychiatrist at VA Puget Sound, Professor at University of Washington. At uh, VA Puget Sound, I serve as a senior telemental health uh, consultant, and I'm a senior consultant as well with the Behavioral Health Institute. Tell me why mental health counselors in particular should consider making telehealth, telemedicine a part of their regular practice. Telemental health, mental health providers from a variety of backgrounds, I believe, really need to embrace the emerging uh, digital technologies for many reasons. One includes improved access for their clients. Um, in, particularly in terms of reaching those that have difficulty having access either for geographic or any clinical matters. And secondly, the ability to access providers with expertise that they need is markedly improved. So there's another good reason for access. In addition, all the literature, current literature shows that um, mental health providers can provide as good a mental health care as that is that is delivered in person. And finally, with all the new digital uh, health technologies that are emerging beyond video teleconferencing, I think it's important for mental health providers to really learn and embrace these tools and put them in their toolkit so that they'll be able to uh, provide a variety of types of care going into the future. So if they want to stay relevant, I think they need to learn these new digital technologies. Great. I certainly think a lot of people have understood the need during the COVID-19 pandemic for being able to offer services, um, telemedicine, telemental health. Has it made a big difference? And will it be useful as useful moving forward as we begin to see fewer restrictions? Yeah, I think that uh, telemental health will continue to be useful in the future, even as the pandemic, as we all hope, begins to ease. I think it's um, with the skyrocketing utilization of these technologies, I think we've seen that um, uh, people who didn't think it would really work well have found that it actually does work well. And as Brad mentioned earlier, it, it will continue to provide easier, more convenient access for patients who perhaps are coming from much further away, so they won't have to um, travel in for an appointment. Um, maybe it's uh, better access, easier access for people who have difficulties in getting transported, even if they live locally. So I think uh, going forward, um, this, this will be part of it. I think we're gonna be moving into sort of a hybrid model of in-person care and care via telehealth technologies. It's been really interesting to see that um, clients and patients really do feel that they're getting high quality care. And some of the emerging literature shows, and this certainly has been my experience as a clinician, is that the boundaries that often exist between a provider and a client are actually much more reduced when they're not in the room. There's less of that sort of white coat intimidation. Um, providers who are caring for patients in their homes have found that uh, patients or clients feel much more comfortable in their own home. They feel less threatened. Uh, those clients or um, patients who have a history of trauma uh, find that uh, being able to work with their provider uh, via um, telehealth they feel more comfortable, more safe. And, and that only makes sense. Well, when we're talking about technologies, what types of tech issues should providers be addressing to ensure that their telemental health services are the highest quality? Um, on the patient side, there are some new challenges have arisen. Um, we, we think of telehealth as increasing access, but in some ways, it's difficult for certain groups to use telehealth. And maybe it's because they um, don't have um, access to enough bandwidth to use for a telemedicine visit. 
Um, maybe they're, um, they don't have access to a device for a telemedicine visit. Maybe they um, you know, don't have a laptop with a camera and a microphone and a speaker on it. Um, maybe they don't have enough minutes on their cell phone plan to accommodate visits. I think it's also important to think about comfort with technology and if the patient is comfortable using the technology or um, needs a, a little tutorial or some support prior to um, connecting with the provider to make sure that everything, all systems are go. What about security issues? What types of software have been approved? What's HIPAA compliant? That's a great question. You know, HIPAA compliant software, what can you and can't you use? And that's actually moving pretty quickly right now. In the advent of the COVID pandemic, there are many waivers were approved to use a variety of different software platforms. Going forward though, I think it's gonna be incumbent for clinicians, clinics to make sure that they are using HIPAA compliant software uh, platforms. During the pandemic, there, um, there have been some relaxations about rules about using HIPAA compliant platforms. And I think going forward that those are probably um, not going to stay in place. And I think providers will be required to use HIPAA compliant platforms. So that'll be something um, important to think about, especially as you're as you're providing your services now, um, start thinking about if you're not using a HIPAA compliant tra- uh, platform to transition to that in preparation for the changes that may come. Is there an easy place for clinicians to find information on updates on federal and state HIPAA requirements for telemental health? I, I would point people for um, for information about all kinds of changes in telemedicine and, uh, you know, uh, legislative um, uh, reg- and regulatory issues and laws and things like that. I would point them um, in our region to the Northwest Regional Telehealth Resource Center. There's, they provide a lot of information. Um, their website is nrtrc.org. Uh, There's also a national telehealth resource center that focuses in just on policy and regulations and things. Um, It's called the Center for Connected Health Policy. And they're they're based in California, but they serve the whole nation. And their website is cchpca.org. So I think those are two um, very helpful organizations to go to to keep up to date. How important is overall telemedicine training for healthcare pr- professionals offering clinical telemental health? When we are working with providers, we find that there's a wide range of skill and experience. Some, some providers have really embraced it and are doing great. Others are, are really sort of struggling and stumbling along and they're getting it done, but there, there's pockets they're missing and there's areas that they aren't aware of. And I think getting that sound basic training, even if you think you know how to do it, uh, I'm always impressed that people who complete our training say, yeah, I hadn't thought about that, or that's a better way of doing things. And I think it's good to just take a moment, go back and get some of sort of the foundational training done to fill in those gaps, to feel more comfortable, to feel more confident, to better understand the options uh, that are at your disposal, which you may or may not know better document, uh, better assure safety plans, treatment plans, all of those things that we, people are kind of all sort of doing, but I think, you know, maybe you know it all already, then, then good on you. But if, if you're curious on uh, just establishing a strong foundation, then I think it, it is important to take a moment and sort of review the evidence base um, and, and you know, get some, some basic tools. Yeah, I, I can I add to that 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 um, I, I totally agree with what Brad said, Brad said that it's so important to um, have some um, training because I think as you do telemedicine, um, you know, provide those kinds of services, there's lots of learning that takes place um, as you're doing it and, and um, about how to, you know, what are best practices for a good clinical encounter. And I think um, training can help move you along that path um, much more quickly. But then also um, training to be aware of the um, different aspects, again, of the legal and regulatory issues that impact the um, provision of care over telehealth services. 
you know, to make sure that you are following the rules, that you understand that, um, you know, you need to have your malpractice, make sure that that covers you in providing telemedicine encounters. Um, if you're providing care to a patient in another state, um, how can you do that legally and, and you know, make sure that you're um, checking all the boxes? So there's, there's all kinds of things in terms of both the actual delivery of the service and then um, all of the pieces around it to make sure that you're um, doing things according to regulations. Will you be helping people at the training learn how to set up their professional space to accommodate the best telehealth workstation? Setting up one's professional space is one of the foundational points that I think is very important. When you're doing telehealth, particularly televideo, um, you must always work to maintain a professional environment and maintain a professional standard of care. And if you don't set the professionalism and standards from the start, it's very difficult to go back and, and put that in place later. And when you're working maybe from your home to someone else's home, it's very easy to let those standards slip and you lose lose track of, of that professional encounter very quickly. So I think it's critical to take time to think about how to set up your office so that you are completing a professional um, encounter. What are some of the access and equity issues that clinicians need to address with telehealth and how is telehealth helping in those areas? Cultural competency and cultural sensitivity is, is very important. We, as, as a clinician, we all know that. And so it is important that with the group culture you're working with that you do take some time to learn to be culturally sensitive. And so in setting up one's office, there, there are things you can do to make it more culturally aware. And then also, as Carr was alluding to earlier about bandwidth issues, there's a whole new area of barriers to access of care known as sort of what's becoming known as the digital divide. And we're finding that a lot of uh, different cultures don't have access to the technology or the bandwidth, uh, particularly our rural clients. So the top three things I really hope that the attendees come away with would be a better understanding of policies and regulations and not necessarily in-depth knowledge, knowing where to go to find this information, knowing how to set up their offices to provide a professional level of care, having in um, knowing how to understanding the literature base to complete an encounter so that when they're done with this training, they have greater um, greater competence, but I think more importantly, greater confidence in being able to provide a high quality professional encounter. Yeah, I, I think I would have said pretty much the same things that I would want the, the attendees to know what areas of legislation and policy and regulations um, uh, are impacted by or impact um, providing services by telehealth um, and to definitely to um, be aware of some of the resources that they can go to to um, obtain um, extra information, um, but also additional training um, and support for providing services. How do you make sure that um, you're providing a safe um, encounter? What kind of systems do you need to have in place should the um, client or patient become suicidal or you need to uh, intervene? You know, what is the, how do you go about thinking through the, the putting in a backup system in place in case you need to call 911, in case you need to admit a patient? All of these types of things need to be thought through ahead of time and you need to have a plan in place. So we will touch on those matters as well.